Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to a bit more Hard Space Shipbreaker on our main account. Chipping away at that debt. Look at us. We're going to hit the 700 million mark. It's uh, it's slow going, but we're getting there. Obviously, all the certifications done, and we're sort of just saving up points. Let's check our equipment and see where that's all at. All good. And uh, the sort of meta project at the moment is um, to really sort of get into one of these ships and, and see if we can tear it apart in one shift. I think it, it might be possible. I mean, reach for the stars. The Celestial B, that seems like the go. Just really quickly, I'll say, I haven't been silent on purpose, I'm just a busy boy. Um, but the whole discussion around mods, I really enjoyed that. That was cool. There was a lot of interesting opinions. Um, and for the most part, everyone was quite polite and cordial. And, that, you know, it's in this modern era where people just bloody fight and scream at each other and try and win as opposed to try and learn, it was quite nice to hear people express their position that might have been different from mine. Um, the other thing, like, if you want context, there was a Space Engineers episode where I was talking about mods, so maybe there was not... I hadn't fully covered my bases there. But, um... Like... A big part of why I talk about it is because I have a classical concept of odds based on, uh, of odds, of uh, mods based on essentially how they were, and they were in the early days more, you know, more akin to cheats. People compared it to cheats, but the mod landscapes changed, and that's the whole reason I even opened the discussion up, because I have a concept rooted in an older way of looking at it, and I'm, I'm personally challenging it because mods are different these days. You gotta understand, building games like Space Engineers or Minecraft or whatever with modding intended from the ground up, this is a modern concept. It hasn't always been the sort of core conceit of gaming. So some of the younger blokes grew up in that environment, and so they have a radically different way of seeing mods. So that's sort of uh, where I was at. So I, it, was, it was quite nice hearing everyone's point of view. So there was some really interesting stuff to be said. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're gonna sort of try and one shift this and get some big money. How quickly can we get this reactor out? That's what I'm thinking about. There was, uh, I mean... There was one really, really fascinating comment to me. Now, I'm not... I'm not having a go or outing or anything like that, but it actually, it illustrated one of the sore core... I think one of the core points that might have been missed that I was sort of trying to get across. Now, I, I understand, like I said, you, you've, you've heard my sort of disclosure that m the landscape of mods has changed, right? There are games built from the ground up in a collaborative fashion. Um, I, I, uh, I made interesting examples around like the Mona Lisa and people were like, well, you know, you could just Google and people have changed the Mona Lisa since then. To which I go, yeah, that's a good point. But it is, the gaming's, the gaming's a little bit different because there is money changing hands. There are licenses and rights. And we have seen incidences like, say, with Fallout Bethesda charging for mods, um, people co-opting other people's mods into the developer's sort of release and then trying to make money from it. I think even Space Engineers got accused of that, though it got corrected in the end. They actually brought the mod creator on board into the studio to do their DLC, I think it was. Um, but I don't think it's unheard of where, like, the developer will see a mod, they'll adapt it, and they'll charge money for it. So, so there's all this really interesting stuff when you introduce money to the equation. And then, at the end of the day, the modding pursuit, like, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to say, if you're modding someone else's property and game, you shouldn't expect money from that. What you're doing is a hobby pursuit. For what reason? For being a fan? For... Um, wanting to do something for yourself, for your own personal development, but it certainly shouldn't be because you're trying to trying to turn a profit for your work sort of thing. Now, granted, someone else shouldn't sell your work and take the money. I, I'll, I'll concede that. But um, I guess what I'm saying, that's, and that's another thing that never really uh, got discussed or came up. But what I was sort of talking about was what I, th what I truly think is a bit more of a classical position in that there is a sanctity to the form to the actual art, which I don't want to say isn't respected, but let's let's say is sort of just perceived differently in in a modern in the modern generation, in a modern culture, right? When I say generation, it's not me trying to boomer. It's what I'm I'm just sort of saying um, uh, how the modern generational culture shift in general. So it's not tied to an actual person generation. It's more the actual the actual like decade sort of thing. So. 
Um, a couple of examples. The Mona Lisa thing is that I'd get at. The point of that example was to illustrate that I think if you go back a generation or two, mine and, and further back a bit, the idea of having the gall, right, to think that fucking with the Mona Lisa, for example, now I don't give a shit about it, to be perfectly honest, but like, it is heralded as this super duper piece of art, right? And the, the gall that you think that you could do better or mess with this existing piece of art, or that it's even a question that would cross your mind, is kind of like I think in a modern setting where where everyone can mod everything, for example, would would be just incomprehensible in in times past. I think culturally, right? It's like, who are you to think you could do better? You know, it's sort of it's sort of off limits, and that's uh, as a course of respect, not even censorship or anything. It's a course of, dude, pull your head in. And don't fuck with the, the, the original art, you know what I mean? Even if you think you can do better, just don't do it. So, like, there is a, like, it's not necessarily ego, but I'm just sort of trying to illustrate there's been a, a shift in the perception. But the main comment I really wanted to address, and obviously I'm having a quick chat about this, because I thought I can't leave it go too long, and you have to bear in mind, I'll just say really quickly, the, the podcast thing, maybe we'll do it later on down the track, I'd be interested, but at the moment I don't have the time, my workload is already what it is, and the response that people gave me was so good, I'd actually have to invest a lot of work into, you know, really going into everyone's comments, and it, like, it's it would be another endeavour, and I'll tell you what, let's just wait till this channel's sort of in a stable place, and we'll revisit that, but in the meantime, you can just have my rants here, so it's on the cards, but it's further off, oops, nearly fucked myself there, but um, someone asked a, a candid question, and it was, if, if you're at a restaurant, if you're sitting down at a restaurant and um, the bloody, it's got every, I, I can't remember the word for word, so I'm sorry if I'm, I'm misquoting, but we'll get the gist. But it's like, you like most of the spread, but the chef's gone and put ketchup, I, you know, I, I guess tomato sauce, but you Americans call it ketchup, on top of the food and you don't want it. And they basically said, so what would you do in that situation? You know, do you... Do you send it? They gave me two options. They said, do you send it back or do you refuse to eat the meal? That was the only options in their mind, the only comprehension. And in that moment, that sort of helped me realize the thing that the fact is there is a third option and I would only have considered the third option, which is you eat the meal because you went out to see what, um, like the chef makes you the meal and it's an adventure. It's a, it's a respect for their sort of their art form like you know they know better you humble yourself before the chef and you go all right this looks good i'm gonna eat it like the whole thing's a bit of an adventure but there is this more modern cultural perspective um which ties in a little bit more with say like takeaway food or something it's like i know what i want and i want that specifically so in the mind of this person again i'm not trying to bash but it just sort of illustrates i think one of the fundamental points that is different between say some of the comments around the sort of free expression, collaborative pursuits of uh, modding in a sort of open source setting versus what I'm, I'm sort of more married to, which is like the sanctity of the original work, right? The, the, the food example is, in their mind, it, it's either refuse to eat it or tell them to change it. And in my mind, it was always going to be you went out not because you know best, but because you humble yourself before the, let's say, the artiste, which is the chef, the master of his craft, to prepare you something that you can experience, something new, something in his vision, and like it or hate it, you will you will see, you know, his perspective. I feel that there's a bit of a humbling respect to it. Now, don't think that I'm saying it's disrespectful to take the other perspective. This is all a modern development, the collaborative nature of essentially designing a product, like an art form. And it's really interesting to see, but I think that might be one of the core points that I missed. I'm not saying there's anything necessarily strictly wrong with mods, and it, it is more of a bit of a dare I say, like a, a well, collaborative, like a hive mind sort of pursuit than the individual artist making his form, you know, bruises and all with everything that's wrong with it, but it's still it. 
And, um, and I guess that's the sort of point that I was getting at, and I found that question actually incredibly telling. And again, I must reiterate, this is nothing against the original poster, but it was just fascinating that in the most candid and honest uh, sort of interrogation of my position, they didn't even comprehend that there was a third option and that that third option would in fact be the core tenet that I subscribe to, which is submit yourself to the artiste and their form and then judge it on its complete sort of vision and then decide whether you like it or not, but at no point choose to interfere um, because you think you know better. So I think that's sort of where it comes from, you know? Um, now remember, there's no malice in what I'm saying. I'm not trying to attribute anything like that. Um, if you feel that I'm sort of asserting that uh, people aren't being humble or that there's ego tied up in there, it's not necessarily that. I'm just trying to use the correct words to get all this out on the table, you know? But um, perhaps, as I like to say, one of the best things about listening is that no one does it properly. Listen to learn. And if you're truly curious about what I'm saying, you you might come away going, oh, okay, I can, I can see that perspective. Because likewise, on the other side, I have, um, oh, what's happened here? I've, se I've heard some really interesting things from you guys on the topics of modding and the benefits of modding to the sort of industry as a whole. But I suppose my, my general counterpoint argument from a ground up was, it was probably never actually about the the collaborative work and the merits thereof, but more about what that individual has a vision to do. You know, like the true, let's say the form of the art, I suppose. Um, anyway, a little bit wanky, um, but I thought I would just sort of address it head on. Some fantastic points were in there, absolutely. I really enjoyed reading everyone's comments. Um, Secured. Credits deposited. God, I freaked out for a second. I was like, I could swear I pulled out that that thing. Um, see, now getting the thrusters out through this little hole is a bit of a nightmare. Anyway, so I'm absolutely for mods. I think someone at one point uh, said I should dis what I was describing was hacks and I should distinguish between the two. Maybe in the more modern setting, but that's sort of where mods started, you know. Um... Yeah, so I was never sort of saying hacks per se. Um, it is it is actually interesting that that there, in the mind of some, that there is a distinction. But is a hack not a mod? You know, you know what I mean. Like that's I think that's the thing, and and that might be where some of the modern, uh, maybe some of the miscommunication breakdown might be there as well. Which is actually, and when you go on to that, that's why I traditionally don't like mods. Um, but it is also, it's a bit of a, um, it's a, it's becoming a dangerous topic when, if you compare my sort of perspective to say some of the others, it's becoming, it's sort of getting into a cultural difference perspective, right? Which I'm really apprehensive to do because so many people these days want to tell everyone how they're right and you're wrong. And it shouldn't be that. It should be, I think this, you think that, that's cool. Let's shake hands and move on. So they have changed the, the art for all the boxes. That's cool. Um, because, yeah, so I guess, like... I mean, as another sort of strange sort of topic I do bring up occasionally on the channel, I'm actually... Even though I'm not an artistic type, I'm an engineering type. I mean, I'm a musician um, as well, but, like, there's an argument to be said that a lot of that ties into your mathematical brain as well. Um... I did all my AMEB for piano uh, when I was a kid in that, and basically, I'm a associate, actually. But it's been a while since I've had to play the piano, to be perfectly honest. Not a lot of call for it, not a lot of room for one. But um, I guess what I'm sort of saying is uh, I, the concept fundamentally of the artist, um, I, I always like to use this example, and some people will find this controversial, but but again, lis listen to learn, not to respond. Don't. Just try and rebuke and tell me I'm wrong, but maybe try and understand my perspective. Is that if you're that horrible, bloody kitty fiddler, evil criminal in jail, like the most reprehensible dude in jail, right? 
and you give him a paintbrush and he makes the most universally adored fantastic piece of art ever does that somehow devalue the art and i know this is a little bit slight a little bit of a step away from what we're sort of getting at but this is uh this might help sort of give perspective on my broad concept of the merit of art and what art is because art isn't necessarily a work product it's not like something that increases productivity or saves lives or feeds the children or anything like that and i guess what i'm sort of getting oh my god that thing is gone oh maybe not i guess what i'm sort of getting at is i tr my answer to that that hypothetical is absolutely yes of course that's possible to me there's no there's really no other option though i'm open to hearing it that horrible human being, no matter what, reprehensible. I'm not saying he's reformed or or, um, or asking for forgiveness or anything like that. This dude is just plain evil, right? Yet, it, I believe you give the man a paintbrush, he can hypothetically make beautiful art. And I find that an interesting point because it doesn't stick with everyone. Some people will say, no, you should censor stuff regardless of the quality of the work product. And it all comes back to in a way, the pursuit of the form and the respect thereof. I think it is, like I said, it's a slight tangent from the modding concept in general, but maybe if I put that to you and you vehemently disagree with what I'm saying, that might actually give you a bit more insight as to why I'm sort of saying the sanctity of the original work as defined by the individual, like the, uh, what we, we, we kept calling it, um, like, developer's intent. I think that's a cool term, right? And um, and why I'm a little bit more married to it is because of that. It's because warts and all, as I like to say, with all the bruises, with all the faults, it was the developer's intent for this product to be this way. And yet there is a pretty strong argument on the other side of, hey, well, we can mod it, we can fix it, we can clean it up, we can make it more complete. We could push it in a different direction, you know, and at a certain point, even if you change one little bolt, one little pixel on the thing, it's not even, it's not what the developer intended in the first place. And this does tie very neatly into what I was saying about, you know, that the dinner and how the commenter um, said, could not comprehend the idea of just eating it and appreciating that that's what it was and and there's nothing they can do about it and they should just acknowledge that other person's sort of vision anyway it's all pretty lofty stuff um but uh that's sort of maybe that helps give perspective of where my original argument stemmed from um conceptually at least uh but yeah, I'd be willing to hear what people uh, have to say. I know it's a bit ranty, but I mean, I guess that's what generated all the conversation. So look, as far as doing a spin-off sort of um, a pod podcast, I'm not really going to do that just yet, but I would like to do it in the future, perhaps when the channel settles at a certain level and I can, you know, sort of walk back on my workload and make more room for it. So, you know, full disclosure, it's, it is on the horizon. If you guys stick with me, we will get there. But in the meantime, we're going to have these intermittent rants. And I thought I would take a moment in this episode, at least, to really sort of um, address all the comments because we've got so much engagement around it. If I wasn't going to do a podcast responding, I had to I had to respond somehow because you guys obviously had some very interesting opinions. But yes, as I said, I really appreciate the feedback. It's been really interesting. Like I said, I'm open to the concept of the modern perception of collaborative effort to push the... Um, more and more, it's less like... It seems less like art and more like a work product. I think, and I think maybe that might be where the sort of, there is a divide there. Um, and I, I get that, you know, um, but at a certain point, I, st I still do think even, even with all the iteration that you can get from modding and the individuals contributing, there is, there is a homogenous issue of creep. If you say you did a, a hundred foot view and had a look at all the mods, right? Are you going to see common threads of things that people mod in, you know, do people mod um, the same sort of... God, it's hard for me to think of this on the fly. But I guess what I'm saying is... Uh, are all the... Does, does each game get the same sort of conversion mod? Is every single game getting turned into a 40k total conversion? Do you know what I mean? Like, if, if you step back far enough and you let everyone mod everything, are we all just modding everything broadly in one direction? 
I don't know. It's an interesting thought. Um, I will finish on one final thought as well. I have no intent here of upsetting people or there's no hostility or malicious nature or anything like that, okay? If you do find yourself somehow offended by what I'm saying, check yourself, right? Because <laughs> there's no way, there's no way you could be offended. And yet there are some people who have gone absolutely off chops and proceeded to be shadow banned, right? Because right here, we just want to have discussion, all right? I don't want an argument, I don't want a fight, and if you're angry, it can't be because of me, man. All I've got is a different opinion, and I'm not pushing some sort of hateful agenda or anything like that. So, but again, this is like 1% of the psychopaths that responded. Everyone else were, you guys were fantastic, and I really appreciate it. Man, um, you know, I'd be happy to hear what you guys think on the back of that. Anyway, team, what a waffle. But again, I, I've done my best to address most of the points that people put up and um and just to really solidify my original position um as well yeah i'm gonna stop waffling because i'll just keep going team thanks again for joining me we might just leave it there for the time being and i'll catch you guys on the next one